Now, recall that our solution to the particle in a box problem is still incomplete. We still do not have a complete solution for psi of x. There is still a constant in front of the sine function which is still undefined. This is that constant b. Returning to the Born interpretation, psi star psi times dx, in our case that's equal to b squared sine squared n pi x over a times dx. And remember, this is the probability of finding the particle between x and x plus dx. So if the particle is restricted to being between 0 and a, meaning inside our box, and that's the only place the particle can be, then that would mean that if we were to take the integral between 0 and a of psi star psi dx, that integral must equal to 1, meaning that it is certain that we will find the particle somewhere inside this box. So by evaluating this integral, this will allow us to calculate b. We will invoke this relationship where the probability of finding the particle somewhere is certain several times in this course. This is called normalization, and b is typically called the normalization constant. All right, so then let's apply our normalization condition and solve for b, which is the constant in front of the solution of our wave function. So again, we have to do this integral from minus infinity to infinity, psi star x times psi of x dx, and since the probability of finding the particle anywhere in space is equal to 1, meaning that it is certain, we can break up this integral into many parts. So if, if you remember, for when x is between 0 and a, then that means then we would, can say psi is equal to b sine n pi x over a. We can also write explicitly the complex conjugate of this value which is going to be the exact same thing because there's no complex part to this then the complex conjugate is the same as the number or the value was in the first place. For all other cases for all other regions in all of space we know that psi of x is going to be equal to zero and that psi star of x the complex conjugate will also be equal to zero. So then we're just going to take these values and we're just going to stick them directly into this relationship that we had or that we did a second ago. So I'm just going to move that over because I'll need a little bit more room to write out this integral fully explicitly. So we have this region minus infinity to zero and that's just going to be equal to zero times zero dx because again this is in this otherwise region. To that I'm going to add this integral from zero to a and that's going to be b sine n pi x over a times b sine n pi x over a dx and to that I'm going to be adding again another integral from a to infinity 0 dx and that's all equal to 1. So let's solve now the only relevant integral which is this middle integral the one that actually has something that we can integrate and then we just need to set that equal to 1. So we have the integral of b squared sine squared n pi x over a I should write a dx in there and that's all equal to 1 and so I'm going to use my u substitution u is equal to n pi x over a that means my du by dx well that's equal to n pi over a and so what that means is then I can write dx is equal to a du over n pi I will directly substitute that into my expression. b squared integral sine squared u and then for dx I'm going to write a du over n pi that's still equal to 1. a b squared over n pi let me write a better n there. integral sine squared u du is equal to 1. Now some of you may have noticed that I stopped writing my bounds of integration on my integral sign and I did that explicitly because as soon as I did my substitution for u the bounds of my integration have changed and so I'm just neglecting writing them in because I didn't want to confuse anybody when anybody asks or is thinking why is it that these numbers have suddenly changed. When I do the next problem I will explicitly write in these new bounds and evaluate those new bounds but for this problem, I'm going to keep using 
the 0 and a, and I'm going to substitute back for x after I do this integral. So that's what happened to um, my bounds of integration. Moving forward, though, we can use an integral table or um, a solution that we've seen before where we know that the sine squared u du, the integral of this, is just going to be equal to u over 2 minus sine 2u all divided by 4. So I'm going to take that value and I'm going to plug that in for my integral. So I'll have a b squared over n pi. Just substituting in for that integral, u over 2 minus sine 2u all over 4. That's equal, still equal to 1. And then at this point, I'm going to substitute back in for u. Because again, I'm going to keep my bounds of my integration to be between 0 and a, the original bounds. And that's in for, for values of x. a b squared over n pi. Well, remember, u is equal to n pi x over a. So I'm going to write n pi x over 2a minus the sine of, and I'll write a big bracket here, 2 times n pi x over a. And all of that is divided by 4. So again, I'm just substituting back in for u my values of x. And at this point, then, I'm going to re-explicitly write in my bounds of integration, which are 0 and a. And recall, remember, again, the reason why I didn't write them in before is because they're different when I have u. And I will go over that in the next example. In this case, I want to keep everything in terms of x, so I will maintain the same bounds of integration for 0 and a. So at this point, we're now just going to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus and apply these boundary conditions, or apply these bounds of my integration. I still have a times b squared over n pi out front. But inside this bracket now, I'm going to substitute in for a. So I'm going to get n pi a over 2a minus the sine of 2n pi a over a, all divided by 4. And from that, I'm going to be subtracting off 0 times n pi over 2a, which just gives me 0. And in the second one, I'm going to get the sine of 2n pi 0 over a, all divided by 4. And this is still all equal to 1. And so I've already explicitly written in 0 in one of the terms, which is this one right here, because I have plugging in 0 in for x means that term is 0. In this first sign part that I have right here, I have the sine of 2 times n, where n is any integer number, times pi times a over a. So my a's cancel out. What I'm left with is basically n is an integer multiple of pi. If I have 2 times any integer multiple of pi, I'm still going to have a sine is equal to 0, because the sine of any number of pi is going to be equal to 0. So that term also goes away. The second sine term that I have here, well, that's just the sine of 0, because 0 times all these numbers is going to be 0. And again, the sine of 0 is equal to 0. So what I'm left with is just this term that's just out front, or the very first term that we substituted in for, this n pi over 2, because again, I can cancel out these two a's. So if I write all that out, I get a times b squared over n pi. And that's multiplied by n square or n pi over 2. And again, that's still all equal to 1. I can cross off these n pi's. And I'm just going to move this 2 and this a over to the other side. So then I get 2 over a is equal to b squared. And what that means is that then I can just take the square root of both and end up with 2 over or the root 2 over a is equal to b.